Welcome to Spit Bucket. Today, we're down in the Yarra Valley at Oak Ridge. We're here with Adrian and Dom from Oak Ridge, who are going to take us right through the whole process. Right from grapes on the vine to the finished bottle. All of, in about that much time. And we're close to, close to harvest. On, uh, in four days time. Four days? Okay. Yep, yep. Tell us what you're looking for to get the absolute optimum to harvest. Who makes the decision? Vineyard people or the winemakers? Well, the vine makes the decision the for okay. us. <laughs> That's a diplomatic <laughs> <laughs> So um, we sampled this yesterday um, for sugar, pH and acid levels. Mm -hmm. And um, they were an optimum um, condition for, for picking, as, along with obviously the, the primary uh, parameter, which is flavour development. So flavours there. They're lovely sweet grapes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're mm -hmm. perfect. Um, and you can see obviously the, the vine health is, is exceptional, um, canopy ha is hanging on and, uh, and fruit's in really good condition. So we've been through, we've dropped a lot of fruit to keep um, crop levels down, mm -hmm. um, obviously to increase the intensity of flavour in, in these bunches and uh, now at a, at a point where we, we're happy to pick. Once you've got your, uh, your grapes, Let's go and see what happens to them. So the harvested fruit we have here uh, for a whole bunch ferment is whole bunch tipped into our fermenter and is left to um, essentially eat itself from the bottom up. We have uh, some, some broken berries on the bottom that were, were foot stomped. Then we, the rest of the fruit was uh, poured on top. And then every couple of days, we just need to release a little bit more sugar for those yeast uh, to consume, to keep them nice and uh, alive and healthy. So the process for doing that is gonna be performed by uh, our fearless host. <laughs> who is- uh, Paid good danger money for this. <laughs> who is gonna uh, enter this, this fermenter and uh, just give them some nice um, manual. I mean, it's the best way rather than any mechanical um, breaking of these berries, some, some nice uh, manual treatment with his feet. So, uh, Ken, if you want to jump in and just uh, give these berries a little bit of a bust up. Jesus, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how solid is this thing? Oh, it's solid. Oh, you know, I thought I'd just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear them breaking up with his, uh, I was going to go sort of waist deep. No, not at this stage. This is very <laughs> oh, early. This afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> this is very early stage of um, of breaking up. So a whole bunch of ferment. These are still. Uh, I could have kept my top on. A load of sugar in them. You could have kept your top. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You you could. <laughs> so once um, fermentation is complete in these fermenters, um, so we have open fer fermentation, uh, which we've just seen Ken stomping with the whole bunch. You've dragged all the dead bodies out. <laughs> We also have fermentation space at the, um, the top of the winery here, some, some larger open fermenters. Uh, once fermentation is complete to a level that we're satisfactory with and a little bit more time on skins to extract um, some uh, colour and, uh, and flavour, once alcoholic fermentation is finished, we will we'll press these off and then off to barrel. So uh, pressing extremely important process um, because there's a, a lot of uh, very important compounds still tied up in the skins. There's still a lot of juice left behind even once we drain off the, the resulting wine. So we place the skins in a, an airbag press and then press off all the juice out of, uh, out of the skins. So there's a lot of tannins um, that are tied up in, in those skins and, and partially in the seeds also that has been extracted through fermentation. And um, that's a really important um, uh, building block in, in creating the wines. So once uh, so fermentation is complete, there's no more sugar left, we go off to, off to barrel. Uh, we have uh, a mixture here of um, bariques, 225 litres, and hogsheads, which are 300 litres. And also these big guys, uh, punchins, uh, range between 450 and 500 litres. So twice daily, we'll monitor temperature. And also we measure in uh, BOME, a scale uh, for measuring uh, density. So it's a... Sugar measurement, that gives an indication as to how fermentation is tracking. So as, uh, as BOME goes down, obviously uh, alcohol is being produced and it's a, um, a density um, uh, rating. Juice is denser than ethanol, which is obviously quite thin. So as, as ethanol is produced, then 
um, then the, the density reduces. Also temperature will increase as uh, yeast produce uh, ethanol and fermentation gases. So at the moment this is uh, sitting at 14 and a half degrees. There are there's many scales throughout the world that uh, different countries use. We've adopted the BOMO scale um, as a as a a whole, I guess, across the, across the country, there are other people working in in, in bricks, etc. Um, and the correlation essentially is um, one BOME equals around about 1.05 alcohol. So, um, lots of yeast strains in uh, in the world also, and they are also they uh, convert sugar to alcohol in in very different ways. So there will be different alcohol yields from different levels of sugar depending on the yeast strain either that's used or the indigenous yeast strain that's in, in the winery from for a wild ferment perspective. And then we taste it. That's a critical part. It's always, it's always good to look at numbers, but a key component is looking at flavour development. So um, now we've just come inside into our lab and obviously um, a lot of winemaking is, is obviously about um, feel and about taste and there, there is a, an analytical side that we, um, that we do need to consider. To perform that task we have an uh, ex extremely capable lab manager in, in Sam <laughs> yep. who, uh, who diligently um, takes care of, of all our all our wines that are that are finished and also of wines throughout ferment. So at the moment, Sam, what have we got going on? So at the moment, I'm just running sulfurs, both that's for free sulfur and that's for total sulfur in wines that have finished fermentation. So the sugars have all been used up and the wines have been sulfured, and now I'm just checking that the levels are satisfactory. So this is this is just a 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide solution mm -hmm. so it's basic because this is now acidic so now I just do a titration. And what do you expect to happen? Well um, I'm got going back to magic. <laughs> magic happens at this stage. Yeah it, it goes back to the same green okay, colour that I started with basically okay, sure. so. That's the colour I started with yep. so and then I sort of just read what's up here and it's 1.6 and for the free sulfur, you do so. It's 1.6 mils was my volume of sodium hydroxide times 16, and it's 25.6. So I round it up to 26 parts free, which is uh, pretty good, hey Dom? It is. So from a for those who are wondering what you know sulfur is used for, it's a it's a preserve. It's an antioxidant, antimicrobial. Uh, we use it very sparingly, so um, there are obviously legal limits. Um, within Australia and other countries that you can go to. We keep extremely well under that, um, but it's, it's uh, is required to, to keep our wines nice and fresh um, and to um, prevent any uh, undue uh, ageing or, or excessive ageing age in, in wines from that antioxidant and antimicrobial action.